I just saw a Sakuga Mad, basically a compilation video of impressive pieces of animation, linked on Twitter, with the sad news that this animator has been depressed for most of the past year, had deleted their Twitter, and was leaving the industry. When I watched the video and saw that this animator had been responsible for many of my favorite scenes from the series they worked on, I felt a need to use my platform here to do what I could to honor them and their work, to voice my appreciation of it, and to spread awareness of the great art they had produced. Let's take a look at one of the best Dogokobo animators of the last few years, Nobuyuki Mitani. Let's start with what's probably my favorite piece of his, this cut from Sancha Sanyo. It highlights a lot of Mitani's stylistic trademarks, and is just incredibly fun overall. Futaba's little thumbs up here seems relatively simple, but it never fails to put a huge smile on my face, so let me break down all the little things it does. Perhaps the most important thing it does to achieve this effect is what's called frame rate modulation, which I'll link a wave motion cannon post on below. Here's what it means in basic terms. Anime saves on drawings by letting most individual images linger. If you show a new drawing every two frames, that's called animating on twos. If it's every three frames, that'd be animating on threes, etc. Once this scene gets to the over-the-shoulder shot, it's animated on twos, but it then switches to animating on ones, a new drawing being used for every frame, which is what gives it that really fluid feel. Classic Disney generally animated on ones, and that's what made all of their stuff so fluid. So the mental association of that style with quirky visual comedy only helps this sequence. Then there's the drawings themselves. Futaba's motion starts with the elbow. It's totally absurd, and not how anyone in real life would move, but it makes it almost seem like she's some kind of marionette being manipulated from above. That momentum carries her hand up, and once again the motion is led by the elbow, which begins to fall. All of a sudden we get a smear to convey quick motion as her hand rockets down, so quickly in fact that her thumb seems to get squished at this weird angle due to the force of that momentum. It gets whipped all the way to the left of the screen, and then settles into its final position. This little shake as its motion ceases being similar to the Roadrunner coming to a quivering stop, and enhancing that sensation of momentum even further. The smile capping it off is also animated on ones, completing that fluid cartoony feel. The use of smears and those momentum conveying quivers really highlight the three main spots her hand ends up resting, and gives it a feel of getting jerked from position to position, these jumps from pose to pose being something that shows up in a lot of Mitani's work. The second half of this scene is just plain adorable. Mitani takes some liberties with the proportions, and gives Sasame these tiny hands while increasing the size of her head, which only inflates further as her face wells up with tears, and she then runs off in a strange, meandering path away from the camera. This seems to be a specialty of sorts of Mitani's, goofy, often distressed running away from or up to the camera, the other standout of this type of scene being from the opening episode of this season's Gabriel Dropout. It's absolutely oozing with quirkiness, and does a great job of characterizing fan-favorite Satania right off the bat. Bonus points for another instance of those fun, sweeping arm motions at the tail end of it. One other feature that showed up a few times was Mitani's ability to get a bit sultry. There doesn't tend to be a ton of sexy scenes in most Dogokobo series, but there's a number of Mitani cuts where he gets to show off some curves, and it seems he's also Dogokobo's go-to lingerie animator, as demonstrated by his handling of this scene from Gabriel Dropout. Or, it seems he was their go-to. Sadly, that won't be the case from here on out. I don't know the specific reasons for his departure from the industry, but it's hard not to look at the incredibly stressful conditions for animators working in Japan and suspect those of at least being a significant contributing factor. Hopefully Mitani finds the respite he needs by taking this leave, and maybe just maybe he'll return to the industry once he's had some time off. As I hope I've demonstrated here, there's a lot to appreciate about his work, so it'll certainly be a happy day if he does. It will also be a happy day if you choose to support me on Patreon, joining Tincho37, Bill, Sam, Izumi69, Darian De Sotel, Joji Matthews, Culver James Kamai, Chris Wagner, and all of my other patrons in allowing me to wake up, see a tweet, and immediately drop everything else to put together a little tribute like this.